What's up guys, Greeny? I just got my new visa here. I'm at Chamchuri Square in Bangkok at the BOI, that's the Thailand Board of Investment. And I just picked up the new 10 year long-term resident LTR visa. I'm gonna tell you guys all about it in this video. I'm gonna tell you the procedure, what I had to do, how it was here, how the process went in obtaining it here. If you don't really meet the requirements, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks that may help you be able to get this visa because it is obtainable. Let's get into it. All right, guys, back home now. Let's get into this visa stuff. So this LTR, long-term resident visa, it's a visa, it's a retirement visa. I wouldn't call it a resident visa by any means. It's just a, a, a hybrid, very good, what I think is the best visa out there right now for retirees, if you can meet all the stipulations, which there are a few. You know, not everybody's gonna be able to get this, um, but there are some ways, you know, that you can uh, maneuver your finances around a little bit to be able to qualify for this. I'll get to that at the end. But let's start now. I'm gonna break it into four sections. Like I said, the last section is gonna be a couple of tips and tricks to help you financially uh, maneuver yourself to maybe be able to qualify. Uh, the first thing I want to get into is the benefits that this visa has. The second one will be the application process, what I had to do to get it. The third will be, you know, when I went and picked it up, what you have to do to, to physically get the visa in your hand. And like I said, the last one, we'll get into some tips. So number one, let's start off with some of the benefits. So what was very intriguing to me and what really stuck into my head is if you get this visa, you don't have to do 90 day reporting. Nothing, nothing is worse to me than having to go wait an hour, two hours, one hour, however long the line is at immigration, it's pure hell. With this visa, you only have to report once a year. But if you leave the country and you come back in, that counts as you know reporting. So like me, I go, you know, trips all the time, whatever, or if I go to America, you know, I'm always gonna go somewhere at least one time a year, more than likely, you know, unless there's another pandemic. So I'll never have to go to immigration again. And to me, that was the number one benefit. Now the price is 50,000 baht, which you may think is a little steep, but this visa is a multi-entry. So if you were to get a multi-entry O visa every year, that's 5,000 baht times 10 years, that's 50. So it's really a wash. You know, unless you think, oh, I'm only going to be doing it for two years. But if you're committed and, you know, I bought a property. So, I mean, I'm committed. I got married. I'm committed to Thailand, you know, for at least the next 10 years. So it's, it, it's great for me. A few of the other benefits uh, that really intrigued me was you get the fast track at the airport. If you're leaving, it's similar to what you get with the elite visa, except for the elite visa, somebody meets you there and actually takes you through everything and gets you, you go on a little uh, golf cart to the airport. It's a little quicker, you get lounges. This one, you just to get you get to go in that special fast track line, which will speed things along a little bit for security and immigration. That's not bad. You also get permission to work in Thailand. So uh, you can apply for and receive what's called a digital work permit. It's only 3,000 baht, so like $100 a year and uh, you can work. Now there are limitations. Uh, you can't do a job that like a Thai person is gonna do, but you can if it, if it has to do with technology or some different things like maybe building a website or doing some online, some online presence, you know, different things that will not interfere with uh, a Thai person's livelihood, like, like certain sales positions or, or food vendor. You can't be a food vendor. You can't do things like that. You know, there's certain things you can do. There's certain things you can't do. You know, you can, you can read up on that yourself. They also removed the four to one Thai to foreigner ratio. So you could just go ahead and, and, and get this if you want. If you decide you wanted to work for some company here that wanted to hire you, it makes that process a lot easier. They can just take the paperwork, submit the application, everything right to the BOI, and you'd be able to work. So, so that restriction that you have on the O and the OA visa of not being able to, to work, that, that, that's, you don't have that with this visa. A few other things that if you are gonna be working and you're still, you know, you're, you're making income in America or Britain or wherever, and you're still making some income here, the income that you earn out of the country, you don't have to worry about. You just file that in your own country. You don't have to file that here. Also, um, they have certain percentages uh, that are a little better if you're under this program as far as the percentage of tax you have to pay if you end up making that much. Um, and the last benefit is 
instead of just dealing with normal immigration and different things, you can go, if you're in Bangkok, to the BOI and they will take care of a lot of stuff. It's like a concierge. And I'll get to that in the last step, you know, where I actually go and get it. I'll talk about that. So the second thing I want to talk a little bit about is the process. So you go onto the LTR BOI website and you apply for this. And there's certain requirements that you have to have. So I'm not going to get into the... Um, there's four different types of visas. Two have to do with working and starting companies and different things. I'm not getting into those. I'm just going to get into the retirement visas. One is uh, called like a wealthy global citizen. So with that one, you have to have a million dollars in assets. That's U.S. Uh, you have to invest 50000 in Thailand. It can be in property, bonds, different things, and uh, make $80,000 a year. Something like that. I don't know. I didn't go that route, but... You can look into that. And both these have this other requirement with insurance. I'll get to that. And the second one, the one that I did, you have to show $80,000 a year income, or you can show $40,000 a year income, and you have to invest $250,000 into Thailand through, with the bonds or property. So if you were to buy a property here that's valued at $250,000, you can use that. You can write that in and uh, get that visa. Then you only have to be showing an income of $40,000. Like if you had a $40,000 a year pension, they would accept that. The other requirement with these is you have to have insurance and you have to prove that you have insurance. And it's not just some BS. Like they really made me submit a lot of paperwork with this. And you either have to show that you have $50,000 US worth of insurance or uh, you have to have 100,000 US in a bank account here just in case something happens. So you wouldn't have to have insurance if you kept $100,000 a year or $100,000 in a Thai bank account. So that's it with the insurance. But for my insurance, you know, I got insurance for my pension. They questioned it a little bit. You know, at first they didn't like my paperwork. So I submitted a bunch of more paperwork, more recent paperwork. I also submitted different claims that I had with Bangkok Hospital here showing that they paid. And I was able to, I, I got a lot of documentation. So I was able to show that, you know, this is how I've been doing it for the last two years. And no more questions asked. They approved it. Uh, when you do the application, they ask a lot of different questions like your education, you know, marriage status. Uh, you could actually, if you have a minor child, you could, they can get a visa too, which is kind of a nice, uh, a nice extra. Um, so you would have to submit some information for that child. But uh, I believe that during the processing, they'll run like a little background check, make sure you don't have any criminal history or anything like that here in Thailand. And then you get it. I mean, it's not, as long as you fulfill the requirements... It's not that complicated, you know, it's just having that, having the right amount of money. Really, it's just about money, having the money here. Third part of the process, I went there to get it. So I get an email and I check online, bam, I got, I'm approved, okay. And so I had a couple different documents I had to print out and I just took them there. I had to make an appointment online. I had to go to Bangkok to the BOI to pick this up. Now, if you're out of the country and you're say you're applying for this from America, you can take care of it at the embassy. I'm not sure if you'll actually have to go to like DC or Chicago, the consulate to get it, or if, you know, they'll do it by mail, but I'm pretty sure you may have to go in to, you know, whatever your closest consulate or embassy to pick this up. But anyways, in my case, I went to Bangkok. One thing that you do have to do is if say you got a different visa, say you have a marriage visa, okay, you have to terminate that. And when you get approved for this, they give you a piece of paper, you know, it's, it's in the package online, and you can take that into immigration, and they'll cancel your visa, and then you can go pick up your 10-year visa. The only uh, visa that you don't have to do that on is the O visa, which is the one I have, um, the O retirement visa. You don't have to cancel that. They just take care of all that when you go pick up the new visa. So I get there, go upstairs at my appointment time, and it's a like on the 18th floor, a beautiful new office. And half of it is uh, the, the BOI. And then they have their own immigration office on the whole other side. And I mean, it's big. This is a big thing. And it's not like, like, it's like new and modern. So I went in there and gave the guy all my paperwork. And I had copies of my passport, everything that you kind of need um, for your regular reason, like a picture, my passport. But he just has you sit on these nice leather sofas. It's very comfortable, very nice there. He runs over the immigration, does everything. When he was ready for me, he took me over there, had them take a picture of me, took me back in the room. I relaxed for a little bit, had my coffee, called me back in. I uh, paid for my visa. When you pay for your visa, either you got to use like the Prompt Pay app, you know, with your banking app for Thailand, just a Thailand bank, or have cash in Thai bots. That's the only, you can't use a credit card or American money. 
uh, you know, English money, anything like that. It has to be Thai bot, cash, or Thai banking. Uh, they'll give you a QR code and you just pay for it. So that was all done. Then I went back. Then when it was ready, he called me back in and the lady gave me my visa. It was all stamped up and I was ready to go. I didn't have to leave my, my uh, passport, nothing. I was just good to go. And I loved it. I mean, they took care of me like I was a king. So for the next 10 years, you know, if I have something I have to do that I think, okay, if I got to go to Chonburi, I know it could take a long time. If it's long lines, if I hear about that, I'll just go to Bangkok hang out for a day, just go there and let them run around and take everything. It's like a concierge. They take care of everything for you. So really nice people. I really liked it. So it worked out really good. I was really happy with the process. A couple negatives, not so negatives, whatever. After five years, you have to um, reapply. Now you've already paid for it. You don't have to pay again. That, that 50,000 baht pays for 10 years. But what you do have to do is show that income again, show your insurance. They just have to verify that everything is still up to date. And then you get it again. Now, in my case, my passport expires in like four years. So I'm going to have to arrange. I'll do it here, probably. Just arrange with the embassy, get a new passport. When I get that, I'll go to the BOI. They'll run over the immigration everything, restamp everything, and, and I'll be good to go. They said it's an easy process. In fact, immigration even stamped like the date. They, they saw my uh, passport's expiring, and they put, you know, that I need to go in there, get it restamped and everything when I get the new one. All right, on to the last thing, just a couple tips and tricks to help you get this if you need, if if this is the way you wanna go. Which, if you can get this and you know you're gonna be here a long time retired, this is great. I think this is the way to go. But the income, $80,000 a year for a pension. You know, that's a lot of money. But what you can do is, if you have a property, say wherever you are from, and you're renting it out, or you haven't rented it out, but you know you're not gonna be back, rent it out and you can use that income. You can use your rental income from your country as part of this income. So say your pension's 50,000 a year, and then you're making another 15, 20,000 a year from uh, renting a house, you know, that all adds up. You can also take other investments you have. So in my case, one thing I did is I had an additional investment outside of my pension, and um, I was able to kind of roll into like a hybrid annuity type pension thing and start getting a, a monthly dividend on that. Or if you have a stock portfolio and you're getting monthly dividends, you can use that income. So you just got to show 80,000. They don't care what the source is. You know, obviously you got to prove it. You got to show it. You got to show the documentation. I had to go uh, for my rental and show, you know, uh, I went through all my Zelle statements. Zelle is like a way to pay in America, but it's all documented in my bank and I got all the monthly statements and you know showed and I wrote a letter saying you know this is my tenant's name and this is how she pays and showed it going into my account every month and, and it was fine everything worked out great you can do it maybe you know if you could just find a bunch of ways to move investments around and whatever you can do it the other ways if you have a million dollars you know, you might be able to do it that way. Look into it. It's a great deal. Like I said, one of the best things about this visa is if you want to do some little, you know, you know, you know, somebody that owns a company, they need you to, you know, lend your expertise to something. You want to do a little work in or a little extra money here or, you know, open your own company like I have. And, you know, if there's certain uh, aspects of it that, that fit into this criteria, you can do it. You can do it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, Hit me in the comments. Let me know if this is useful information. Let me know. Check this playlist up here. These are other videos that I've made regarding visas and, you know, just like buying a house, living in Thailand, motorcycle license, all kinds of things like that. Check out that playlist. Greeny out.